ஐ எம் ஸ்ருதி நவ் யூ ஆர் வாட்சிங் மை யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸ்ருதி ஃபார்மா வேர்ல்ட் டுடே ஐ எம் கோயிங் டு டீச் யூ எ சிம்பிள் அண்ட் பியூட்டிஃபுல் டாபிக் தட் இஸ் ஸ்டீம் டிஸ்டிலேஷன் ஹியர் ஐ எம் கோயிங் டு ஃபோக்கஸ் த பிரின்சிபிள் கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் அண்ட் ஒர்க்கிங் ஆஃப் லெபோரட்டரி ஸ்கேல் ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் இண்டஸ்ட்ரியல் ஸ்கேல் ஸ்டீம் டிஸ்டிலேஷன் அப்பாரட்டஸ் டிஸ்டிலேஷன் ப்ராசஸ் இஸ் கேரிட் அவுட் வித் த எய்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்டீம் தென் இட் இஸ் நாட் ஆஸ் ஸ்டீம் டிஸ்டிலேஷன் This method is mainly used for the separation of high boiling substances from non-volatile impurities. This method we can also use for the separation of immiscible liquids. High boiling substances cannot be separated by simple distillation because at high temperature the active constituents may undergo degradation or decomposition. In such cases steam distillation is the preferred method for the purification and separation of high boiling substances now move on to the principal part of steam distillation you know when an immiscible mixture starts to boil any idea no okay an immiscible liquid mixture begins to boil when their vapor pressure equals to the atmospheric pressure when the vapor pressure when the sum of their vapor pressure equals to the atmospheric pressure at that point the immiscible liquid mixture starts to boil now uh, let's see an example water turpentine mixture will boil at 95.6 degrees celsius which is much less than the boiling point of pure water we know the boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius at an atmospheric pressure of 101.31 kilopascal and the boiling point of turpentine is 160 degrees celsius which is much higher than the boiling point of pure water okay but this mixture but this water turpentine mixture will boil at 95.6 degrees celsius you know why let's see at this temperature at 95.6 degrees celsius the water exerts a vapor pressure of 86.245 kilopascal and turpentine exerts a vapor pressure of 15.06 kilopascal then the sum of their vapor pressure that is 86.245 plus 15.06 that is equal to 101.31 kilopascal which is equal to the atmospheric pressure that is the reason why water turpentine mixture boils at 95.6 degrees celsius are you following now the applications of distillation steam distillation uh, as we know uh, steam distillation is a method which is mainly used for the separation of immiscible liquids we can separate uh, toluene and water turpentine and water mixture okay and it is also used for the extraction of volatile oils from any seeds clove and eucalyptus leaves uh, this method is uh, used uh, for the purification of liquids with high boiling point example essential oil of almond uh, it is also used for the preparation of aromatic water now advantages of steam distillation we can uh, separate volatile oils at lower temperature without decomposition and without loss of aroma simple distillation is the preferred method for the separation of volatile oils at a lower temperature without any decomposition and without loss of aroma we can also use steam distillation for the separation of low volatile substances with higher molecular weight molecular weight uh, higher than uh, water okay Uh, so these are the advantages of uh, steam distillation now let's see a disadvantage of steam distillation uh, if any uh, cases uh, the water and uh, liquid mixture uh, in the distillation flask undergo any type of interaction uh, in such cases uh, steam distillation uh, not preferred this figure represent the distillation assembly which is mainly used in laboratory scale it consists of a metallic steam can or steam generator fitted with a cork and this cork is having two holes through one of the hole a long tube is placed it almost reaches the bottom of the steam generator it is mainly used to relieve the pressure inside the steam generator in case 
pressure inside the steam generator increases at that time water will be forced out through this long tube for that purpose this tube is used in uh, steam distillation so it is known as safety tube through the other hole of the cork there will be a bend tube a bend tube is placed through the second hole of the cork and it is inserted into a distillation flask through a rubber bung the bend tube is inserted into a distillation flask through a rubber bung the other hole of the rubber bung there will be a delivery tube this delivery tube actually connect the distillation flask and the condenser the condenser is connected to a receiver via an adapter there will be a provision for heating the steam generator and the distillation flask the steam generator and the distillation flask are heated simultaneously to get the uniform flow of vapor through the boiling mixture so these are the important parts that is present in the distillation assembly i repeat this distillation assembly consist of a steam generator and it is fitted with a cork this cork is having two holes through one of the hole a safety tube is placed the safety tube is mainly for relieving the pressure inside the steam generator if pressure increases considerably at that time water will be forced out through this tube so it is known as safety tube through the other hole a bend tube is placed the other end of the bend tube that is inserted into a distillation flask it almost reaches the bottom of the distillation flask and it is connected through a rubber bung into the distillation flask through the other hole of the rubber bung a delivery tube is placed this delivery tube connect the distillation flask and the condenser condenser is connected to a receiver via an adapter so these are the important parts that is present in the distillation assembly that is present in the steam distillation assembly which is mainly used in laboratory scale let's talk about the procedure the materials to be distilled is placed in the distillation flask that is our non aqueous liquid and a little amount of water that is added into the distillation flask the steam generator or steam can is filled with water heat is provided to both the steam generator and the distillation flask heat is supplied simultaneously to get the uniform flow of steam through the boiling mixture the material inside the distillation flask get uh, heated the steam carries the volatile oil into the condenser from the condenser distillate is collected into a receiver actually this distillate contain both aqueous and non aqueous phase we can separate these two phases by using a separating flask okay this is the procedure involved in steam distillation let's talk about the procedure figure represent the steam distillation assembly which is mainly used in industrial scale it consists of a jacketed steel with a perforated plate this perforated plate forms a false bottom manholes are provided at the top and side of the steel this manholes are mainly for the purpose of charging and discharging of the feed steam is introduced through the steam inlet florentine receivers are used here to collect the distillate from the condenser now let's talk about the procedure the material from which the volatile oil has to be separated is placed in the steel above the perforated plate steam admitted to the jacket of the steel water and the material that is present inside the steel are heated so it starts to boil the steam also injected below the material through a steam pipe from the jacket okay steam also injected below the material through a steam pipe from the jacket and the steam that carries the volatile oil and get uh, uh, enter into the condenser from the condenser 
the distillate is collected into a receiver here florentine receivers uh, receiver is used uh, so the oil uh, which is uh, lighter than water it can be separated uh, from the upper spout and water which is returned to the still so uh, this is the procedure that is involved in uh, industrial scale steam distillation